welcome to this week's edition of the Dakota Angler 2-Minute Fishing Report. Well, first off, before we get started with the report, I want to make sure I hope all of you had a great 4th of July holiday. I know we did. Uh, the main thing is hopefully all of you still have your digits, if you know what I mean. So again, hopefully you had a great, safe holiday weekend. Uh, we had a little bit of weather across the northern part of the state, and that uh, impacted the number of people that were able to get out this weekend. But it really didn't affect the number of nice quality walleyes that were caught over the weekend, to say the least. The lakes up in the northeastern part of the state that produced walleyes included uh, Bitter and Wabay, and those are the two main ones, uh, as you, you would expect. And then uh, Indian Springs, Lynn, North Rush, Hazleton, Dry Lake by Clark, also Big Stone, Opitz, Goose, Pius, as well as Reeds produced a few walleyes this past week as well. Down in the uh, southeastern part of the state, the lakes that uh, produce walleyes are the usual suspects, as, again, you would come to expect. Uh, Dry Lake by Willow Lake, Thompson, uh, Ponset, Whitewood, also a few being caught at Henry, East Oakland, we haven't mentioned that in a long time, uh, Sinai, 81 Ponds, Vermilion, Island, and then also Twin. And remember, Twin is the trophy lake. And then also the Missouri River really continues to do well. A lot of the walleyes now have kind of moved deeper, so keep that in mind. Uh, again, typical walleye patterns across the, uh, the area. Uh, and so, speaking of that, how the guys have been catching the walleyes have been those typical summer presentations. A lot of people are pulling plugs now. Uh, hornets, flicker shads, uh, shad wraps, uh, walleye nation of uh, shaky shads have all been working quite well. Other people are pulling bottom monsters with leeches and crawlers, and also, you know, the slow death rig has really produced a lot of nice walleyes, and we'll talk about that in Todd's tackle tips. Other people are casting swim baits, and again, when we talk about typical summer patterns, Cast those swim baits along those weed edges, and you're going to find the fish. Uh, so a lot of people have been using uh, swim baits like walleye assassins, the Storm Largo Shad, also the new Ducket uh, Subtle swim baits that we have on sale. Uh, they've been also working quite well, so keep that in mind this upcoming week. And as far as for the perch bite is concerned around the area, uh, really hasn't taken off yet. Uh, I'd say Big Stone right now has probably the best perch bite, but other lakes that have been uh, producing a few perch here and there include uh, Thompson, Ponset, Pius, Bitter, as well as Dry Lake by Willow Lake. In this edition of Todd's Tackle Tips, we're going to talk about slow death rigs because, again, uh, this time of year, the slow death rig is very popular, and honestly, I have not seen a better rig when it comes to producing walleyes. A lot of nice fish are caught using the slow death rig every year. Uh, the slow death rig, there's nothing really special about it. It's a bent hook. Uh, it first came out by Mustad, but there's a number of other companies that have hooks that are very similar to that. Uh, there's a number of different companies that have different types of rigs. So slow death rigs uh, can be a plain hook. It can also have a bead on it. Some of them will put uh, a float on it, such as uh, JB. Other companies will also put other types of blades on it, whether or not it be a small, uh, small Colorado blade, or others may put a small you know, propeller blade or a prop blade on that. Others will put uh, a new blade on there, and we have that there. The Montana blade by JB has been working very well at the same time. So, again, no matter what slow death rig you choose, again, it has been very lethal for the walleyes this past, you know, this already this past week or this summer, and also in the previous years. And then the main thing is with the slow death rig, you're only going to use a half a crawler, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit, but also you're going to go quite slow. That's why the term slow death. And you're going to pull that at less than a mile an hour. The slower you go, the more revolutions that, uh, that rig will actually take. So again, the more enticing that presentation will be. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to rig that slow death rig. Okay, now all I'm going to do is I'm going to use this killer crawler made by uh, Berkeley Gulp. It is an unbelievable uh, type of crawler, plastic crawler to use with a slow death presentation. All I'm going to do is show you how to feed it onto the hook. So I'll take the head of the crawler, point of the hook, Feed it right through, push it up onto the hook, have the bar come out, and push the head of the crawler up past the eyelid of the hook, and have a little bit of a tail sticking out afterwards. That's how you rig a slow death rig with an artificial crawler or actual a real crawler, but again, you would only use half of a real crawler. I highly recommend the slow death presentation. Well, as you just saw, it's pretty easy to rig a slow death rig. Uh, no different than any spinner rig or anything like that. But again, the presentation of the slow death rig makes it really irresistible for a lot of the walleyes around the area. So if you don't know a lot about the slow death rig, stop on by. 
check them out. We have all the great selection of rigs right behind me, right here at the store. And if you can't make it to the store, check us out on the web at dakotaangler.com. And also, before I leave, I want to make sure you understand this one right here, the Maximile blade, has been also a very popular uh, type of presentation to use with slow death. So again, a number of different ways. The whole key is making sure you rig it up properly. Give it a shot. Now it's time to take a look at a few photos that you sent in to me this past week. And remember, folks, if you'd like your photo included in next week's version of the Two Minute Fishing Report, please send it to me. Send it to Todd at DakotaAngler.com or post it to our Facebook wall. And before I end this week's report, I want to ask a little favor of you. Next time you're here at the store and if you watch this report, please let me know how you enjoy it and how we can make it better. Uh, because honestly, if it wasn't for you, we probably wouldn't be doing this report. So again, uh, your feedback would be much appreciated. Well, folks, that's this week's version of the Two Minute Fishing Report for Dakota Angler. I'm the owner of Todd High Camp, and as we say around here, fish on! We'll see you next week, and again, thanks for watching. Stay healthy, and folks, please stay safe.